Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Schlappe and in this video I'm going to show you a very powerful extension for Ableton Live which is called CliffX Pro. At first glance it is not easy to understand what exactly it can do and how and that's because you can literally control anything from anywhere in any way in Ableton Live and that is of course totally overwhelming and perhaps the reason why you have no idea where to start. So let me give you some examples what you can do with CliffX, what you usually can't do in Ableton the easy way. Snapshots. With CliffX, you can take a snapshot of your set to recall it later. You have a detailed control what elements are stored, so you can store only the track state like volume, pan and sense, or you can store the state of the devices on your track. Not only can you recall them dynamically from a clip or a MIDI controller, you even can recall them gradually with the ramp option. To give you a second example of what you could do with CliffX, you can fully customize your launch pad in quite an easy way. Um, I won't go into much detail, but for example, if you take those eight buttons, they represent those eight um, loop tracks I have, which I use for live looping, and I can hold hold down the play button and then start the, the clips um, in those tracks, for example, or I can stop them either quantized until the next one or unquantized like immediate. I can um, delete clips as well. There's like tons of functionality in here and I'm going to show you how you can set up a thing like this in my tutorials. Imagine a longer track where you want to move this loop marker around without using the mouse. For example, you play an intro and at some point um, you're going on stage and then you end the loop and the whole thing uh, proceeds. Now what you want is to loop a certain part later in the song. So you would have to go there and put the loop um, here and I wanted to have it like four bars, right? It's not possible to have different loops inside a song, but with CliffX Pro, you can program a marker which will do that for you. So now this section of the song will loop and in the beginning it was like two bars. Now it's four bars. Okay, the section is fine. So proceed, but set the loop to a next section. And that's easily be done with CliffX Pro. The mapping feature and ease of use of that in Ableton is a big selling point, right? With CliffX Pro bindings, you can do a similar thing, but much more dynamic and more flexible. And uh, best of all, you can use Touch OSC or any other OSC software to represent those values and mappings you do on an iPad or on a phone or whatever you like. So to show you that, um, I set up this MIDI fighter Trista to control the sense of a specific track. So at the moment it's bound to the currently selected track. So when I step through my um, Ableton set, it will represent the currently selected track. And also I get um, displayed in the iPad what send I am controlling at the moment and what the values are and the names are shown. Um, but you can also fix it to a specific track. For example, when I press this button, um, it will control the second track. And regardless if I selected a different track, right? Lastly, let's have a look at scripted looping. That is what brought me to CliffX Pro in the first place. I record three loops each one bar in three different tracks. And I define those values with my launch pad. Slot one, one bar, three loops, and all those parameters get uh, reflected in on my iPad. And then I simply press the button to do the actual recording. I 
While building this rig for a master study in Maastricht during Corona, I learned so much about CliffX. Because I couldn't find a comprehensive from start to finish tutorial, and I'm also an educator and like to share knowledge, I decided to make this tutorial series. So where to start? I think best to start is with the very basic concept, right? So let's get into it. My name is Schlappe and let's talk about CliffX Pro. I'd like to think of CliffX Pro. Whoa, whoa, hey, wait, what's the deal with the puppet? That's weird. Well, I wanted to give CliffX a face. I think it really helps to understand how it works. Say hello to Cliff and let's move on. I'd like to think of CliffX Pro having a little assistant by my side who does all the button pressing and fiddling around for me when I'm busy making music. Would you do that for me? As in real life, an assistant usually works best when you give them simple and clear commands which they can understand easily. Don't expect them to think for themselves. Now, to give clear instructions, you need to ask two questions. What does he have to do? And when does he have to do it? Those two dimensions are represented in CliffX Pro by actions for the what dimension and triggers for the when the action is executed. So let's get our hands dirty and have a look at Ableton, shall we? Now I've prepared a simple Ableton project in which I want the metronome to be turned on when the second scene is launched and to be turned off again when the third scene is launched. You can do this by pressing this button with your mouse or you can uh, map a keystroke or a um, MIDI controller to it. But we have our little assistant, remember? What about letting him do the work. We need the clear instructions and to find out we have a look at the CliffX Pro manual and uh, usually I just uh, type into the search what I'm looking for, metronome. Okay, so on page 11 there is an action which is called metro which turns the metronome on or off. Okay, let's try this. Metro turns off the metronome and turns it back off. All right, that's the what dimension. Now, the when dimensions, uh, a trigger. We do this in this case with the clip. What we need to tell Ableton is that this is a command for our assistant. And we're doing so by starting the name with square brackets, followed by the action metro. The same for the third scene. And now let's have a listen if it works. So second scene, metronome is turned on. And third scene, metronome is turned off. Excellent. But there is a little problem. When the metronome is already turned on and I launch the second scene, it gets turned off because it's simply um, the same as manually clicking that button. Let's dive in a little bit deeper and have a look at the manual again. Um, the manual is a document which is very coherent, but you have to learn how to read it. In the middle, there's the description. On the right, there are uh, variations and examples. They are coherent. So on the left is toggle, turn on, turn off the metronome. On the right are the, the corresponding actions. Who would have thought? Metro on stands for turning on the metronome and metro off stands for turning off the metronome. Let's put that in. We want in the second scene, the metronome turned on and in the third scene, the metronome turned off. We start the, uh, when the second scene is launched, metronome is turned on. Third scene, metronome is turned off. Okay, cool. Now let's quickly talk about other possibilities to trigger actions. The first one was a clip and the second one is the name of the scene. You can use that as well. Start with the bracket and turn on uh, and type in metro on and the same for the third scene, square brackets, metro off and voila, metronome gets turned on and off again. Lastly, there's also the option to do this in the arrangement view. You could do the same with those cue points you have. You give them the name with the square brackets, metronome gets turned on, and when the arrangement passes the next cue, metronome gets turned off. That's pretty sweet, isn't it? 
So that wraps it up for today. In the next tutorial, we are going to talk about Xclips in more detail. Until then, you can support me on Patreon, uh, hit me on my Discord server. And as always, I'd be thankful if you could hit the like and subscribe button. And until then, stay in control and see you in the next one. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.